I believe PL helps my classroom be more equitable because the model provides opportunities for all students to meet their goals. Now, those goals are gonna look very different, but they're all gonna be receiving the education and the practice that they need to meet them. My name is Angie Lee. I teach second grade dual language at PL Prep in Dallas IC. This is my seventh year teaching. I've taught from first to third grade and a little bit of high school. And I've taught here in Dallas, in San Antonio and in Mexico. I actually learned about personalized learning when I applied to PL Prep. I remember um, they had a huge banner and with their vision. And one of the things that spoke out to me was the phrase education with a one size fits one approach. And as the year started, we had professional development with education elements and we had learning excursions with the PL department in Dallas IC. And we were able to see what personalized learning actually looked like in action. And that was super helpful. I had never had PD that was actually personalized and differentiated for teachers as well. And one of the things that we did was uh, we created our own core values for the school, our pillars of success. And within that, we developed a pathway for teachers so that whenever you come here and you are working on your professional development, it's gonna look completely different to each teacher, just like it would in the classroom for each student. When I look back from when I was teaching in a more traditional method, to now, the biggest change I see in, in all students, honestly, across the school, is that students are more engaged. They are self-directed because they know where they are at. They know what they need and they're able to become very independent learners. And that goes um, across all academic levels. And PL is really important for me right now because I believe that personalized learning is one of the ways where we truly serve our kids because no matter what they end up doing or where they go, if they're able to know and advocate for themselves, they're gonna, you know, fulfill all of their dreams, hopefully. It's important to me that every student is celebrated in my classroom and personalized learning gives us the tools to do that. Sarah Theriel. I'm a social studies high school teacher at Pathways Academy of Technology and Design in the Hartford Public School District, which is in Connecticut. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my personalized learning journey. So it started when I was asked to attend a series of PD that were given by education elements in my district. And then I kept bringing it to my classroom and every little part that I brought, I loved what it did to my students. I loved what it did to the atmosphere and the climate and the culture. And I loved it so much that I I was asked by my district to become a, we called it student-centered learning, so to become a student-centered lead for the district. So it was my job to help transform my school and not just my classroom. The biggest impact I have seen is in the students themselves. So students have a lot more ownership when it comes to personalized learning because they are choosing the way that they learn, the how that they learn. Students are excited to come to class and excited to get to work because they're doing things that they know that they like. They're still reaching the same standards as everybody else in the classroom, but they're just doing it in a way that works for them personally. Because they're able to choose their multiple pathways, they have to create goals that they're gonna reach in each of those pathways. And they also have to do self-assessment, right? Am I reaching this goal? Am I in this classroom doing what I need to do to reach this goal? This is my goal getter corner. So students will keep track of their own goals that we set. There's each of these for my classes. I have six classes out of the eight periods that I teach, so there's six boards. Each student gets an individual line. We write their goals at the top, the standards that we want to reach, and we use their ID number versus their name so they don't know who the other people are. And they get to check off when they are done with that standard, when they have completed their goal for the unit. And that standard, that goal, and how they reach it is different for each of my students. I've seen growth 
in my students, I have seen a stronger community, right? Because part of personalized learning is also being able to collaborate with other students in the classroom, which is a skill that they'll need outside of this classroom, or a skill that they'll need outside of this building. The biggest thing that I have seen is the reflection piece. Students are able to talk about what they're learning. They're able to bring it to other places. And to me, that's one of the biggest things because I want them to, to leave here not knowing stuff that they can look up on Google, right? I want them to leave here knowing the skills to be able to sift through information, the skills to make them better workers out in the workforce, and the skills that are gonna make them stand out and be successful when they get to life after high school. It's also about relationships, right? The kids come in here the first week of school, I don't know them at all. And it's very important to build that relationship first so you know where each student is coming from. You're using the data that you collect, the data from the last year that you have to be able to personalize plans for them, to know who needs one-on-one -on -one instruction, who can be a little bit more independent. And that is the information you need in order to make personalized learning successful personalized learning, this journey that I've had been on for four years, this is going into my fifth year of doing it, has radically changed my teaching for the better. Personalized learning is important to me as a teacher because I think it's the bread and butter in terms of deep learning and students making meaning independent of me. I am not the focal point, they are. Carrie Rutigliano, a teacher at Mayfield High School. This is my 21st year at Mayfield High School. I'm an English teacher by trade. I'm also an academic coach. And this is my colleague, Mr. Matt Mahalik. And this is my fifth year at Mayfield High School. I and mean, I'm a social studies teacher and just really excited to talk about all this today. A couple of years ago, I started to see more and more in my students a lack of engagement. And we had an opportunity as a school to visit other schools, other programs that have had a personalized approach and I was incredibly inspired in terms of what I saw. Seeing students in a personalized learning experience, growing their autonomy, being independent and being engaged and setting schedules, optimizing their time and prioritizing their routine. One of the big high points for me in terms of my personalized learning journey on a day-to-day -day basis would be the conferencing that I get to do with my students in a one-on-one -on -one setting. For example, I can go over students' extended response problems in AP government. I can go over their FRQs. We can talk about their work and their projects. And that has been really powerful to be able to get that one-on-one -on -one time, especially for students that might not be as socially active as others. And those kids that do better in the one-on-one -on -one setting with the teacher than maybe in front of a whole group that maybe don't feel comfortable asking a question in front of the whole class. It's been really great to see those students kind of open up and ask a lot of questions during our one-on-one -on -one conferencing. In addition to that, one of the high points, you know, a lot of kids are, say, just tell me what to do. But over the course of the option experience, they grow into independent, strong-minded students, both academically and also in terms of their social, emotional health. So those are high points, seeing that growth. And yes, you, you see that, you observe that in a traditional classroom, but there is um, greater opportunity in a personalized learning space to be independent and to um, see that growth. Encouraging ownership um, for my students in the classroom is a huge part of what we do every day in the option. I would say one of the biggest ways we do this is by this, making the students advocate for themselves on a daily basis with their teachers. The one thing that I would describe it as, it's really like a college student union and students are working on assignments that they know they have to get done through our online Schoology platforms. And then they come to their teachers with questions and information that they would like to know. So we've really flipped the model of teachers going to students with information to now students coming to teachers with questions about the information that we post for them on our online learning platform. So the students advocating for themselves, we think that's huge not only to, for developing their skills, but also preparing them for the next level in terms of their college education. And that's going to be a huge skill for them to learn to be successful at the next level. In addition to that, because we bring into 
the option experience, the personalized learning experience, the coaching model, looking at habits of mind, looking at developing time management, students creating their day so that they can schedule a routine that allows them to finish their practice or their summative assignments within the course of the day. They are developing a far more balanced life and outside of the classroom, they're not waylaid by all of this work and they're getting better sleep, they're more alert, and so they're far more balanced in terms of their social and emotional well-being. For me, my personalized learning approach in the classroom comes down to allowing students to show what they know in a variety of ways. We don't just do you know, traditional summative assessments here in the option program at Mayfield, we do a lot of project-based learning assignments, a lot of PBLs in my social studies classroom. For example, students next week will be creating their own political party with their own political issues that they care about. So trying to engage the students in a more fluid environment. I think the number one way to do that is finding a way to tie the content back to their own personal beliefs in their everyday life. And I think that's probably the number one way we have been successful here in the option program over the last three years is all four content areas have really been able to do that um, successfully. I remember when I started personalized learning, you would hear well, I don't know if kindergartners can do that or I don't know if first graders can do that. They can. Hi there, my name is Sarah Vaughn. I teach first grade at Baxter Primary School in the Putnam County School System. I first learned about personalized learning mostly through Ed Elements. I started personalized learning though before, so I just didn't really have a name for it. Education Elements really helped PL in my classroom though because it opened my eyes to other ways of implementing PL, like through a playlist. That is one of my favorite ways of getting in small group time and letting my kids have a voice and a choice in what they are learning and what they're doing to demonstrate their mastery and their learning. My students have a must do and a may do list. We relate it to mustard and mayonnaise. Things on the must do list are things that we have to get done. We talk about our favorite playlists and I like to listen to my favorite songs in different in a different order um, so they can complete the tasks on that list in any order that they would like. On the may do list, those are things that might interest them and they can do any or all of them. Doesn't matter, there's their voice, there's their choice. And eventually we'll have several things on the must do list for them to accomplish and even some things that are differentiated or even put out there for them to self-reflect and pick which activity would best meet their needs. Um, but this is one of my all-time favorite PO models and it is the playlist. When I look around my classroom, I see students who have all kinds of different backgrounds. They have different experiences. We have students who have been exposed to great things. We have students who have been exposed to not so great of things. No matter what a child has been exposed to, what they've experienced in their six years of life so far, I want every child to come to learning on an even playing field. Creating that equity is huge. I am a firm believer that the students that come into this classroom can be independent and self-sufficient learners. I believe that my students, even though they are six and seven, they deserve a voice, they deserve a choice, and PL brought that to even their learning. I find that my students become more independent and they also become more aware of themselves as learners. Um, they know how they're doing. They are able to guide themselves through their own learning tasks and talk on their own about their success. That is one of the biggest impacts that I've seen in my classroom is that my students take ownership. Student ownership is not just being able to reflect on your work and know and take ownership of that, but it's also being able to reflect on your behavior and how you're meeting the expectations and taking ownership of that. We know that we're going to make mistakes in our learning. We know we're going to make mistakes in our behavior. And guess what? That's okay. Every day I go home and I think of 
what can I do to make tomorrow better, to make learning even better, make it more personalized, make it more interesting. What can I do to be better than I was the day before? And I'm so excited to learn even more and to continue to grow with personalized learning in my classroom.